Beautiful folks, what is up and how are you doing? This is your favorite struggling R&B producer, Valentine the Plug, and we are back with another video. And I can't wait to play y'all the sample that I made. Today we are making a black type beat, and as a lot of y'all know, I am mostly inspired by Black's first album, Free Black, which is still to me his quintessential album. Of course, he's come a long way since that sound as an artist, as an MC, as a singer, as a songwriter, of course. He's doing amazing things with his Love Renaissance label. Um, but when I have to make black type beats, I usually take my inspiration from Free Black because I feel that it is his best album, even though the difference with East Atlanta Love Letters is like it's negligible. Almost they're, they're both amazing albums. So I'm going to play all the preview of the sample and then I'm going to just um, break it down. It's not so much a cook up video, it's more of a breakdown video. So let's go and do that. So one thing I want to say, I'm breaking down this guitar part, but what you gotta know is that when you're about to hear it in the piano roll in a few, it's actually pitched down about three semitones. So uh, basically the duck three semitones go down three half steps from every chord that I'm about to name. So right now I'm playing a G minor seven chord, but in the chord progression uh, in the sample, you're gonna hear an E minor seven chord. So it's gonna sound like this. I also perform the downstroke in the guitar sample. So it's like this. So then I head over to the A fret and I'm playing a different voicing of a D sharp major seven chord. It goes like this. That's basically it. So it's like this. Do, 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 do. Okay. That's basically it, the entire sample. The guitar is just there uh, as a complement to the chord progression that I already got. It's also played with an electric guitar. So now you know. All right, cool, so we're back in FL Studio, and before I play all the chord progression, I would just like to play you the entire sample, get that little piece of gratification out of the way first. Let's get it. amazing sounds good sonically i think it's a better fit for an album like free black than it would be for an album like east atlanta love letter or the ep that came after it and that's purely because stylistically uh, his, cha his choice of producers has evolved his entire sound has evolved probably because he's at a better place in life because free black was dark as shit uh, and i love that for the guy though i love that for the guy so um let's go break down that chord progression all right, so let's get to breaking down the chord progression. I turned off the effects on my piano so you can clearly hear what I've done. So right now we are in the key of G major with its relative minor being E minor. And like I said before, I actually played the guitar at um, three semitones up. So I actually went back down from A sharp major all the way down to G uh, uh, major. But really no difference because it sounds amazing this way. So what I got here is an E uh, minor ninth chord and the E minor is the sixth chord in uh, the scale of G major. From the sixth chord, I'm actually going down to the fourth chord, which is a um, C major seventh chord. And then I'm actually playing uh, a C sus to seventh chord. However, a C sus to seventh chord actually looked like this. However, I did uh, pitch it down a half step because I thought it sounded better that way. You do have that liberty. I also inverted it so that, you know, um, I thought that was a cooler sound. So once again, basically the chord progression is 6-4-4. Um, four, four. Uh, not a common chord progression, but I, I really liked it this way. I really liked the tension that it gave me. So this is what it sounds like without effect. So 
So once I had that down, I actually went ahead and started processing the piano because I did want that cloudy sound. So first thing I did, I released the EQ, of course, pretty, 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 pretty big high pad cut. A crystallizer, of course, get that granular echo synthesis and crystallizer gave it um, this cool effect. I really like the delay. I really like the granular synthesis delay. Uh, RC24, a little bit of color, a little bit of decayed effect. I actually only have the wobble, the distortion, and the digital on it. And shaper box to play a little bit with the signal. I actually went for the filter shaper. I released a, a clean low pass filter on it. Uh, play with the cutoff and the resonance. Basically, these are just pre programmed rhythms. I set the mi mix to uh, um, 59, and this is basically what I got. Sounds jittery, sounds spacey, exactly the kind of sound that I needed. Now combined combine with that guitar, sample right now sounds like this. Moving on. So a very cool thing about Glaze is not only are a lot of its patches based on vocals, so it's basically a vocal synthesis engine, it also has a lot of pre-programmed riffs and runs which you can use. So I went ahead into the kit, I took this one, this particular kit, I didn't use any effects on it on Glaze because I knew I was going to use my preset to get my kind of uh, very wet, dark R&B vocal kind of sound. So auto-tune set to E minor, I think, I think I'm using the relative minor. Could have used the G major, of course, to uh, round crystallize and a neutron free compressor. So, right now, the sample with these three elements combined sounds like this. And one thing that's important, which is actually why I chose this vocal sample, it sounds kind of it's not it's it's singing yes but the 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 tone feels more like it's 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 moaning and i think that adds a particular taste to this beat with which really encompasses you know what a black beat is about in terms of vocal samples they're not very bright riffs and runs they're kind of moaning it's kind of there's a lot of emotion, a lot of longing, a lot of hurt, passion. I would say despair, but that's very dark. But you, you kind of get what I'm getting at. So the two pads that I'm about to show you, which I'm using this uh, processing chain for, regular schmegler processing chain, are actually both from Omnisphere. Omnisphere is a VST that I haven't used in a, in a while. Uh, I wanted very wet pads, but also very filtered at the same time. So this pad is the main pad. Sounds like this. You'll mostly know that I set my pads very wide because I want them to fo function as a big ambient hug around the rest of the elements in the beat. Now, of course, typical EQ cuts, you know, get that underwater effect going on. Chorus, you know, make it sound just a little bit wider. Phases is a very interesting way to add movement. Of course, you know, you have two elements, two signals, which are essentially combined. They are out of phase and they produce an amazing heavily filtered effect. Shaper box, of course, playing with the rhythm and the mix, get that kind of surging, pumping effect going on. I set the mix to 100%. I don't do that a lot, but for this beat, it worked. And of course, crystallizer at the end. So then I add a second pad, which is even more filtered, but it does have a lot of um, more high end. It has a lot more brightness to it. So all elements combined, sans the bass, is this. So then I go ahead into Analog Lab, and y'all already know what I do. I take out the crawling bass, I play just a little bit, I play just a little bit with the macros, which for some reason are reset right now. This, this is particularly weird um, but this is actually brightness and this is uh, this is timbre or at least it should be but you know all things considered all things combined sounds like this.
and you might be wondering, what am I going to do after this? Well, I'm about to tell y'all. So I go into Edison, I decide to record my sample because I want, you know, to consolidate everything. Um, I could have just done select control alt C and turn it into one track, but you know, I'm old school like that. So, you know, please don't blame me for not having gotten rid of this habit, but you know, your boy's an old head like that. I'm 36. I'm 36, you know, um, so that's what I could have done, but I did it the old school way. I went into Edison and I recorded it like this. Once I did that, I sent it to a new channel like this. I put halftime on it, EQ and some multiband compressor, which I'm about to get to in a minute. And now it sounds like this. So heavily filtered, super, super, super cloudy. So at this point, I decided to uh, up the tempo, see what would happen. Now it sounds like Wasn't entirely satisfied with that. So then I decided, I figured for myself, well, you know, what happens if I add some of the recorded elements back to the sample and I pitch down the tempo? Then I get something I really, really liked. For some reason, recording the sample, half timing it, and adding it to the beat, you know, added a very, very significant layer that I feel makes the beat. So that's when I decided for myself, you know what? Let's add some drums, get a tentative idea of how it could sound. So the main thing that's actually missing is the guitar and one of the pads. And I kind of like it this way. I don't mind that the guitar is heavily filtered in the background. It doesn't really need to take center stage. So it's fine. Like, um, it's, it's kind of fine like that. So at this point, I already have a very basic framework for the beat. The question is, what else do I want to add now? So I decided to, to do a little bit more sample um, processing. I decided to give it just a little bit more high end. So I dial back the low pass just a little bit. Uh, I'm side chaining to a channel for reverb and a channel for delay on which I have crystallizer and on the other one I have um, a little plate. So it should sound, should sound a lot more wet right now. Yeah, I'm definitely liking like this. You may have noticed that I've also separated my pad channels. I had them both routed to the same channel, but I did want a little bit more degree of control. So I decided to um, send one of them to a different channel, uh, process it just a little bit differently so that a lot of my high end is also coming through. So that's why it sounds um, like this. Just like that, it's perfect. It took me a couple more clicks, but it's perfect. So the last thing that I'm gonna do for the sake of variation, for the sake of not uh, having this beat be too repetitive, because a lot of it relies on the ambience, but if you're somebody that really likes melodic content, you're gonna get bored easily of this beat. So these kind of beats work particularly well with a vocalist, but without a vocalist, it's almost 
if you can't envision a vibe or a mood with these kind of beats, with these darker R&B beats that rely heavy on filtered sounds, it's almost as if you got to picture it yourself and that is something that not everybody feels like doing. So I'm going to add a lot more, well not a lot, but I'm going to add some more of these vocal chops just for the sake of giving the listeners something more to look forward to to listen to. Okay, so right now I'm focusing on minor details. I'm actually pillaging all of my splice kits that contain vocal samples uh, tuned to E minor, since that's still the key that I'm working with. Uh, I could go for this one. Hold on. Which, of course, you all know from Streets by Doja Cat, of course. Uh, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna. So uh, I'm just gonna pick out a few words. I actually want quick vocal stabs, honestly. Stuff like that, which I can just, you know, use as a quick vocal vox, a quick vocal FX even. <laughs> but the problem is, it doesn't need to sound too soulful. It really needs that, that kind of trap-ish grit. Something like that. And then I'm gonna just sprinkle them across the beat. And it doesn't even matter if they're not set the tempo even. It's good like that. All right, beautiful folks, with the arrangement being done and me essentially having constructed a dope beat, which has plenty of details in the ambience, if you're looking for all the vocal chops and stuff like that, it has a very hard hitting drum beat, very static, nothing too basic. Its arrangement in terms of layers is fuego, it's thick, it's like a thick layer of, of ambient sounds. I think we've got a dope black type beat, but that is my opinion, of course. I'm curious as to what your opinion is, so drop it in the comments if you don't agree or if you, if you feel the same way, feel me. Either way, I'm happy y'all stuck around for this video again. Um, not much educational, but I do definitely hope entertaining, and I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Peace.